want to appreciate the Lord that is dwelling in you. Thank you for the opportunity given up to me to speak the word. May the name of the Lord be praised in your life. Amen. The Lord who started the journey with you will perfectly in the day of resurrection. I don't know whether you have noticed that our daddy in the in this parish, the pastor of this parish, is the symbol of humility. I have seen that in him right from inception since I joined this church. He is an epitome of humility. In my earlier interactions with him, he has always been addressing me as sir. A shame. And I wanted to tell him that he stop. But the Holy Spirit says, stop it. Don't say anything. And so that he appreciate the Lord in you. That humility that the Lord has endowed you with, the Lord will continue to perfect it. Amen. He will continue to take this church to higher heights. Amen. You will not go before your time. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I will start this sermon by taking the second lesson. And then we will we will run it off taking the first. Matthew 6, 24, 24. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And I will give us a prefix before Jesus made that statement. In Matthew chapter 6, from 19, he said, you know, store up for yourselves treasures on earth. He said, when moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. He said, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I will ask this question. Who are those who can store up treasures in heaven? Who are those who can store up treasures in heaven? And readily the answer that will come to us is the ones who are kingdom partners. The ones that are who kingdom partners who have been saved by the blood of Jesus. Jesus. And I want to ask you, are you saved by that blood? I want you to underline that. Are you saved by the blood of Jesus? Matthew 6, 24 says, Jesus was making a declaration. He made them to know. No, let's not take it. Matthew 6 to 24. Matthew 6 24. We have read it. No. No. Have we read it? No, we have not. He said, No one can serve two masters. He said, Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let us open our Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. And I will read it from here. He said, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. So people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Matthew 19 24. He says, Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. What is the explanation of this parable? It is a parable that was made by the Lord Jesus. A camel going through the eye of a needle is impossible. And so if it is, how can a rich man enter the kingdom of God? The most likely explanation that Jesus was using was hyperbole. It is a figure of speech. It is an exaggeration for emphasis. Jesus was making an exaggeration for emphasis. Jesus used this technique at all the times. When you refer to a, a, a statement where he said, a plank in one's eye. Let us open our Bible to Matthew 7, 3, 5. Matthew 7, from 3. He said, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your eye? You hypocrite. The first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Matthew 23, 24. And 
Nauri from here. He said, you blind guys, you stand out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Jesus Christ has always made his message very clear to us. It is impossible for anyone of us to be saved. I am just giving us an intro before we go into the, 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 the message proper. It is impossible for anyone to be saved on his own merit. Since the world was seen as a proof of God's approval, it was commonly taught by the rabbis that rich people were blessed by God and were therefore the most likely candidate for heaven. Jesus destroyed that, destroyed that notion and, and along with it. The idea that anyone can end, end eternal life. The disciples asked Jesus, who can then be saved? Jesus answered, is the basis of the gospel. With, with, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. So that all things are possible with God. Men are saved through God's gift of grace, mercy, and faith. And so, this is the conclusion of a passage that I am going to give you now. So you can link it together. A rich man approached Jesus. He asked him, he said, teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Jesus answered him, he said, obey the commandments of Moses. He said, the man asked, the man asked him, he said, which one? Jesus replied him, he said, do not murder, number one. He said, do not commit adultery, number two. He said, do not steal, number three. He said, do not give false testimony, number four. He said, five, honor your father and mother and then love your neighbor. Ask yourself. The young man replied, he said, all these I have kept. He said, I am a dynamite. I am very good at keeping I mean, commandments. I am way above those commandments. He said, please tell me which one do I still like? Where do I still like? Where can I still work? Can you still place me? Jesus answered him. He said, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. He said, then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because the Bible recorded that he had great wealth. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can see where we're coming from. And so now, the question is, can we serve both God and money? Are we in love with money to the detriment of our salvation? Because the guy, the man, that, the rich man that came to Jesus was like, Oh, I am good at keeping commandments. And when Jesus hit him so hard, he fell flat. I, I cannot imagine his face when he left Jesus' presence. When Jesus told him, go and sell your possessions, and then give to the poor, and then come follow me. That is a very huge, I mean, it is a huge task. It was a very huge task. How can I sell my possessions? How can I gather all the things that I've toiled for, right from day one? <laughs> How can I then, I mean, the level that you have, 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 have found myself, the level of, of respect that people in my community have, have, worked, have bestowed on me, how can I just throw it away in one second and then sell my wealth, sell my honor, give it to the, your, to the poor and then come follow you? Where is the respect going to be? That is food for, for talk this, for, this, for all this morning. And that is why Jesus made that statement. He said, the camel going through the eye of a needle is, is, I mean, he said, he said, he said, he said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Wow. And so this morning, where have we placed ourselves? Are we worshipping the wealth? Are we are we in, 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 in that position where we place wealth as emphasis to the detriment of our salvation? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 25. Matthew 6, 25. 
Therefore, I yes. say unto you, yes. take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor, ye for, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than me, and the body than raiment. Praise the Lord. When I read through this chapter 6, from 25 to 34, what I saw there was servantship and blessings. I saw servantship and blessings. And so God is saying this morning, he said, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Is that what you will eat or drink? Or about your body? What you will wear? Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? First of all, let us take the definition of of that word, worry. Worry means giving way to anxiety or unease. Allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or, or troubles. When you are giving to, 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 to giving your heart to difficulty, when you allow worry to take your heart, troubles to take your heart, when you are unease, when you worry and you cannot even place yourself where you belong anymore. When I check the word, the, the, the word worry, I checked that the word worry in the Bible, I was not pleased with what I found. And I started to look for the synonyms. And great were the words that matches or matched up with worry. worry. Let us take them one by one. Worry is trouble. Worry is bother. Worry is disturb. Worry is distress. Worry is upset. Worry is concern. Worry is disquiet. Worry is fret. Worry is agitated. Worry is unsettled. Worry is part of. Worry is scared. Worry is flustered. Worry is stress. Worry is tax. Worry is torment. Worry is plague. Worry is bedevil. Worry is bog. Worry is nag. Worry is rattle. Worry is way down. Worry is doubt. Worry is fear. Worry is the edict. Worry is irritation. Worry is misery. Worry is misgiving. Worry is torture. Worry is trial. Worry is uncertainty. Worry is bad news. Worry is apprehension. Worry is annoyance. Worry is anxiety. Worry is concern. Worry is pain. Worry is vexation. Worry is woe. And the question is, do you want to have anything to do with any of this? No. no. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to look at antonyms. That is the opposite in meaning. And only give me two words. Calmness and reassurance. And so if Jesus is not dwelling on that word, worry. When Jesus just, just, he just dropped, dropped the bombshell. He just said, do not worry. He knew what worry was, was all about. And so this morning, the antonyms of worry have two meanings. Calmness and reassurance. And the Lord is telling you this morning, if you are in the state of worry, that you, you should relax your nerves. You should calm down. God is giving you an assurance. I am only a trumpet into what God has spoken, I mean, has spoken unto your life. I am only a trumpet. And I want to reiterate this morning that you should relax. Worry is a complete opposite of faith. Worry is a complete opposite of faith. And the Bible wants us to understand in Hebrews 11, chapter 6, is that faith is impossible. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. For those who come to the Lord must believe that He is. And He is a rewarder of those. That diligently seek him. When you are in a state of worry, you are disconnected from heaven. God does not take the issue of worry lightly. Because worry can make you to do ungodly things. You can say ungodly things. Or remarks. I could remember in those days, I was gone in for a project. The time I lay my hands on that project, I was always going down. 
And it got to a point. I started complaining. And the complaint was so cruel to my God. It was so cruel. And at that point in time, I never got to place it together. My health started deteriorating. When you look at what that word worry, sickness is part of the synonyms that were attached to it. Mm. And I developed a kind of sickness. And when I was, I was always going to the hospital, I always said it here from times and two times over. And each time I go to the hospital, the doctors will check my body temperature, take my BP, take whatever, and they tell you, brother, I don't know what is wrong with you. Your BP is so high, or there is nothing wrong with you. But I knew what was going on in my body and flesh. I knew I had developed a kind of sickness that only the Lord can heal me. And so, I cannot go through the story now because it's a very long story. But surprisingly, I found myself in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me. Out of the crowd, the Lord just singled me out and spoke to me. And since then, I have never remained the same again. And so I can tell you, I have been there. I've done that. I know what worry is all about. I can tell you everything that has to do with worry. Psalm 27 says, Do and have me beseech me. That was what David said. He said, Do and have me beseech me. He said, My heart will not fear. He said, Do war break out against me. He said, even then will I be confident. You can see that in Psalm 27, chapter 3. What are you going through that has given you worry? Jesus is telling you this morning, do not worry. Do not do what? Do not worry. He said, do not worry about your life. He said, what you will eat or drink. Or about your body. What you will wear. He said, is not life more important than food? And the body more important than clothes. Mm -hmm. Let us go to Job 2 9. Job chapter 2, verse 9. When you get that, please read for us. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thy integrity? Cause God and die. Cause God. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not did not Job sin with his sleep. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I will give you what happened before Job made that statement. When you open your Bible to Job chapter 1, verse 17. No, let's take it from, from 15. No, 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 ma. Let's take it from 13. 13, yes. And, and there was a day yes, sir. when his sons and his daughters yes. were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. Yes. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The, the oxen were, were plowing and the, ax, the axes feeding beside them. And the Sabian fell upon them. And took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. Yes. And I only, and I only have escaped alone to tell thee. Number one, sixteen man. While he was yet speaking, yes. there came also another mm -hmm. and said, The fire of God is falling from heaven mm -hmm. and hath burned up the sheep mm -hmm. and the servants yes. and consumed them. Yes. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Number two. Continue my 17. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The, the Chaldean made out three bands and fell upon the camel and have carried them away. Yes. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. Yes. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Thank you, my 18. That's number four. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine yes. in their elders' brother's house. Mm -hmm. And behold, there came a great wind yes. from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. Mm -hmm. and, and it fell upon the young men, yes. and they were dead. Yes. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. 
Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Thank you, Lord. We can see what befell Job. Five calamities on a single day. I do not pray. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to put it. Job can only be the one to absorb the tribulations that befell him on a single day. In quick successions. <laughs> In quick successions, you can see the calamities that befell Job. This one was coming. That one was coming. That one was coming. And at the end of the day, what did Job say? He worshipped the Lord. He said in, in, in 20th, he said, At this Job, go, Job, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. What are we going through? What are we, is it, is it, is it commensurate, commensurate what we are passing through to one of the calamities that befell Job? And Job could still find it in his heart to do what? To praise and worship God. I want to tell us something. It's a secret. God is interested in our statements when we are going through tests and trials. When we are in distress and problems, God wants to know our heart. He wants to see whether we will do what? We will cause it. God is interested in our statements. And so when we are going through problems, there are two agents that have been dispatched to do what to monitor us. And who are these angels? I mean the agents, the angels of the Lord and the demons. It may please you to know that there are angels and demons that have been dispatched when you are doing what they are passing through trials and tribulations. One was, I mean, angels were there to do what? To be called. And the demons are there to do what? To be called. And they do what? They will now go back to God. You see what happened before Job was tested. Each time the, 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 the angels present themselves in the presence of the Lord, Satan will also present himself. And so Job said something when he fell down. He said, In worship. He said, May the name of the Lord be praised. In your troubles, will you be able to say, I praise you, the Lord God? This is a free for thought for us this morning. Can we take on the spirit of Job in our troubles and woes mm -hmm. and say, may the name of the Lord be praised. What are we going through this morning? God is telling us to not worry. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. God yes, sir. uses tests and tribulations to know Rabbi. the true test of our character. We throw our hands in the air in worship Rabbi. and praises Rabbi. when things are rosy. Rabbi. Did you get that? We come to the presence of the Lord and throw ourselves in praises and worship Amen. when things are rosy. Amen. But let us see the reverse. Amen. When things are rosy, we cannot just come here and worship the Lord and praise Him wholeheartedly. When we are jobless, when we do not have any dime in our pocket, can we give Him that quality praise? When things are going down for us, can we say, God, you are wonderful? Is our hands not coming down when the job that we're expecting is not coming forth? The hand that we raise in worship, in hope, is it not dropping gradually? Are we losing the trust in God? Are we losing that trust, the earlier trust that we had in God? Are we losing it this morning? In sicknesses and diseases, when we're being afflicted, when we're going through serious sicknesses, that has refused to go, can we worship God? Can we worship God? I will tell you a little story. A general overseer of a popular church in Nigeria was telling the testimony of how God took the ministry, his ministry, from zero level to a high level. He said there were times in those days when the ministry could not afford to meet their needs. Problems were multiplying. There was serious lack of funds to execute church programs and to meet all the church's projected needs. Parishes that were springing up were having serious financial obligations to meet. Things were in disarray and there was time lags in meeting all these needs. The man of God said something. 
He said at that time, he said he was still a lecturer in the university. And the bulk of running this church he stops at his table. He said, when these problems surfaces, his wife, who's the mother in Israel, will wait till he comes from work in the evening. He will serve his supper. And that was the only time they, they had time to they had time to discuss. That was the only time they discussed the problems, their personal problems, the problem of the church, and all whatnot. And so while he was eating, the mother in Israel will always say, in apprehension, he will start to table all the problems, the ones in the church, the personal life, everything that they are going to at that point in time, he will table it as he was eating, he will bring it also to the table. The man will not talk. The man of God will not support that in word. And the, the mother in Israel will always continue to test her. Are you not going to say anything? Eat and the man, I mean, when he finishes his food, he will wash his hands clean and then go to bed and lie down. And the woman will go there and nagging and, are you not, what are you going to say? Are you not going to say anything? I have then told you everything that you are going through. Won't you say something? And the man, who God, the man of God will say one thing. He said what? He said, Jesus will provide. Mm. So what will come out of his mind will be what was like, was Jesus will provide. He said, is he not the husband of the church? And is he not the one that called us, that gave us the, 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 this job or this work? He said, because he has called us, he will perfect it. That will be his statement and he will sleep off. And... Did those needs were met? Yes, they were met, and they were met in a miraculous way, even before the, the, the programs kicked off. Are we in expectation of any blessing that the Lord has, has promised us to give unto us? And it, 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 it seems as if the blessings are not forthcoming, and worry has now taken over. God is telling you this morning to not worry. And I prophesy unto somebody this morning, He will meet your needs. Amen. He will meet it on time. Amen. And He will meet it in a miraculous way. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's open our Bible to 1 Peter 5 7. And if you get that, please read for us. 1 Peter 5 7. Thank you. Casting all your care upon him. Yes, for he careth for you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. First Peter 5 7, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he does what he cares for you. And that's why he is giving you a, 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 his word this morning. He's giving you a, 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 a reassurance. He is telling you to be calm and he's saying, Do not worry. Amen. I will tell you another story. Twelve spies were sent to spy the land of Canaan, which the Lord had promised on oath to their forefathers to give to the Israelites. But only one came back. Twelve, twelve spies. Twelve people were choosing from the twelve tribes of Israel. And they asked them, go and spy the land that the Lord has said is going to give to us. We want to see what happens. Bring fruits. Bring whatever. Bring stones. Bring everything that you see in that land. And let us bring it and discuss about it so we can do what we can have a feel of where we are going to. And they went there. What, what happened? When they got there, they came back with, with, with negative reports. Negative reports. They gave negative reports that, that, that did what? That threw everybody in Israel in the camp. The Israelites that threw them off balance. It threw them off balance. What did they say? Let's take it. They said, they came back. They said, they, they, they came back with a negative report. Let us open our Bible to Deuteronomy 1. Deuteronomy 1, 27. And leave Mama 127. Mama. And he murmured, murmured in your tent and said, Because the Lord hated us, we have, he had brought us forth out of the land of Egypt 
to deliver us into the hands of the Ammonites, Amorites to destroy us. Yes. Whither shall we go up? Yes. Our brethren have discouraged our heart, mm -hmm. saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The, the cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither shall be afraid of them. The Lord your God will go ahead before you. He shall fight for you Amen. according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Thank you, ma'am. Let us stop there. The rebel against the, 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 the word of God. The word of God says, I have given you this land. And so what happened when they got there? They said they saw giants. We will not dwell on that. But I will, I will, I will take it from 29. No, from 26. He bought, but he said, but you were unwilling to go up. That is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1, 26. He said, but you were, you were unwilling to go up. To do what? To possess the land that the Lord has promised them. You rebelled against the command of the Lord, your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, the Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt. You can see what they were saying. That was, was, that was part of what I was saying. When worry takes over, you can say anything. Mm -hmm. You will forget where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When worry takes over, the children of Israel, the big boy, they, for, they forgot that it was the Lord who dried up the Red Sea that was giving them the command to take the land. Mm -hmm. They had forgotten the goodness of the Lord. They had forgotten the signs and wonders with their straight hand that he took them out of Egypt. They had forgotten. But when they got to what to where they, to, to Canaan, when they went to spy, they said they saw giants. Who are the giants? Who are the giants that are harassing your life? Are they greater than your God? No. Is that is that what you allow worry to do to you this morning? No. And so what is he saying? He said, but you you were unwilling. Look at what the Bible is saying in Deuteronomy one twenty six. Say, but you were unwilling to go up. You battled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tent and said the Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt. Is it, is it, is it a sin for you, for God to tell you, go and claim the land that I'm going to give you? They said the Lord hates us, so he brought us out of Egypt to deliver, to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites, to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made us to lose heart because they gave us a negative report. The negative report was that was, was what? Threw them out of balance. And so they said the people there are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large with walls up to the sky. We even saw the Anarchists there. Then I said to you, do not be terrified. And that's what that is what Jesus is saying this morning. Look at it. In both ways. The Theronis, chapter 1, verse 29 says, Do not be terrified. Is it not as the same thing as what God is telling you in Matthew chapter 6, 24? Yes. Yes. He said, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you. Amen. As he did for you in Egypt before your very height. And in the desert, there you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son. All the way you went until you reached this place. In spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God who went ahead of you on your journey, in fire by night and in a cloud by day, to search out places for you to camp and to show you the way you should go. When the Lord heard what you said, he was angry. That's where, that's where I'm going. He did what? The Lord was angry. And that's how the Lord will be angry when you are making the derogatory statements. When you are not seeing what God is, is saying about you. Hmm. When you are not saying it, when, what, how God has asked you to say it. And that's how God will be angry. Look at what God said. He said, mm, he said Not the man of this evil generation shall see the good land. Look, you can see that. He said, Not the man of this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give your forefathers because you do not have trust in me. Because you don't believe in me anymore. Because you thought all that I did for you when I dried all the rest, it was joke. Or was it a fluke? Or who do you think I am? And so God was so angry. I swore to give, he said, except Caleb. 
Caleb son of Jephunneh. He said, because he will see it. And I will give him and his descendants the land he set his feet on. Because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Are we losing focus? Are we losing focus? Let us see whether the Lord carried out, carried out his strength or his judgment. Let us open up. Let us go to Deuteronomy 2, chapter 14. He said, 38 years passed from the time we left Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the Zeret Valley. By then, that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp. Had the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminated them from the camp. All those who despised God. God said, you're not going to see the land. And look at it. He said, in, in 14, he said, 38 years passed. God retained them there. You are not going to go anywhere. You are going to be in this desert until all, I, I do what? I eliminate all of you. I will now bring your, 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 your children, those who are innocent. He said, now when the last of these fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to me, today you are to bypass the region of Moab. Let us not go there. It was a long story. Mm -hmm. So it was only Caleb because of his work, because of his faithfulness. So are we faithful to the Lord this morning? Are we, are we still on the same page with the Lord? And that is what God is telling us when He says, do not worry. Let us open our Bible to Deuteronomy. No, I think we've done that. We've done that. Matthew 6, 31. Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, yes. take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Yes. But seek ye for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Yes. I want you to know that our Father in heaven is a God of provision. Yes. He takes Amen. care of every living thing on the face of the earth. Amen. He even made a comparison. He said, look at the best of the earth. Mm. He said, look at the ants. No, the best of the earth. He said, look at, look, at, look at the ants. See how I make provisions for them. The Lord provides for them. He said, look at the lilies of the valley. Somebody was telling me, I've not seen the lilies. The, that flower, personally, one of one. But somebody was saying it's a beautiful flower. So God is saying, and he's comparing, he's, he's comparing the lilies of the valley. He says, so beautiful that your, our Savior was compared in beauty as the lily of the valley. He said, the lilies do not work. They do not labor. They do not do anything. But they are beautiful. And at the end of the day, they use them to do what? They end up in fire. God has bestowed beauty on, on what? Flower, the flower that is here today and tomorrow will be thrown into fire. God has bestowed so much beauty in that flower, and so the beauty that the, that, that, that that was endowed the flower was compared with the beauty that our Lord Jesus exhibits. So that's why they call Jesus the lily of the valley. He said the lilies do not labor or spin. He said the Lord has bestowed them with splendor. He said, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Even Solomon that was all the richest king in his time was not dressed or being bestowed with beauty as the Lord bestowed beauty on the lilies. Jesus asked, will he not more decorate you? He said, oh you of little faith. In 20 years, he said, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? He said, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. 
So the pagans, they do all, they don't have, they have all these things. He said, your father knows what you need. Your father knows you need them. Amen. You are in the program of the Lord. But he said one thing. He gave us a clause. In 33, he said, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. That is the, this, the clause that is attached to me this morning. Are you a child of God? Have you given your life to Christ? If you have not given your life to Christ, then there is no issue. There is no issue. I can tell you categorically that it was when I gave my life to Christ that God started to do new things. Amen. He said, I will do a new thing. He said, it springs forth. He said, shall you not perceive it? That I will make a way in the wilderness. So there shall be waters in the desert. Amen. There will not be way in the wilderness. There will not be way in the, in, in the there will not be water in the desert. If you do not give your life to Christ, that is the long and short of it all. The Lord will do what? Will bless you with the condition. You have seen it here. I did not write this Bible. He says, but seek first. He said, but it was the Lord Jesus that was saying it. He said, but seek first his kingdom. And you will stop worrying. That is it. Seek first the kingdom of God and all your worries will be taken over. Amen. You do not have to do what? You don't have to worry. He said, and all these things, his kingdom, let's take it. He said, but seek first his kingdom. That's when you give your life to Christ. What is the next level when you live holy? Mm -hmm. Giving your life to Christ is, a, is, is, is one thing. Yes. Then, and the next level is to do what? To live, to live holy. holy. If you are, you are giving your life to Christ and you are still living in sin, then there is a problem. And that's why the, 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 the two the chapters, the first and the last thing, they are intertwined. And that's why I'm taking it from that Matthew. Because when you go to Amos, it's talking about judgment. judgment ben. So, but you must first see the grace of God before yeah. judgment. Amen. And so, if you are not in tune with Christ this morning, if you are not, or you are not a child of God, there is no issue. Because you cannot see from, you, you, you won't be able to see what we are saying here. But when you are, when you are a child of God, and then the Lord will start relating with you. I could remember in those days, I was nowhere, but I thought I was somewhere. I thought I was somewhere. I was, I was on my own. I always said that I thought I was in my comfort zone. Please don't leave me out of this your Christ issue. Don't bring this Christ to me. I know there's Christ, but just leave me out of it. But when it happened, it happened. I did not plan for it. I did not plan for it, but it happened. I gave my life to Christ, and then it happened. I started, I started to see God in a new dimension. God started to take me from where I thought I was. He broke me down. Totally, he broke me down. He dealt with all the issues that I was confronting with. He dealt with sin. Because <laughs> we, there is nothing like really sin. There is nothing like little sin in the presence of God. So yeah. God dealt with me because he wanted to, to do what? To give me a new life. Yeah. So he first dealt with me by breaking me down and then set my path on the path of glory. Okay. And that is what God is saying this morning. Yes. Have you given your life to Christ? If you have not, there is no story. I can say it categorically. Philippians 4.19 says, I will supply all that you need according to my riches in glory, even by Christ Jesus. And that is what Jesus is telling this morning. I can do anything. But if I'm not having your name in the book of life, I don't know you. And so there is a condition. After you are giving your life, you are made to know who God is. How? The God, God blesses you with Holy Spirit. Amen. Once you have given your life and confessed Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, He gives you everything that pertains to righteousness. Amen. Everything that you need to, 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 to live with so you can live a glorious Christian life. He gives them to you automatically. You don't have, don't have to bargain for it. It comes on you. And so, then you start going to church. And they now teach you the do's and don'ts of the kingdom. The do's and don'ts of the kingdom. 
But if you are what? If you are a child of God, you will keep to the rules. But if you are not a child of God, you will fashion out a way. And which is what? A way of destruction. If the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto me, unto a man, but the end thereof is what? Destruction. Where there is no sin. I'm sorry, where there is no law. There is no sin. So there is a code of conduct when you come to that kingdom. And that's why some people are still saying, man, leave me. Because they cannot do what they cannot live the way God has. I mean, the design that God has, has, has designed for children, his children to live. They cannot live righteously because they are still enjoying the sin. That sin that they are, they are, they are, they are still play, playing with, they are still enjoying it. And so where there is no law, there is no sin. And that is what God cannot condone. But the, the, I mean, there is this popular saying, it says, he who must come to equity must come with clean hands. There are rules for living as a child of God. And if those rules are consistently and persistently defied, let, let's break it down. As a child of God, you have come to God. And you know the rules. You are living righteously. Good for you. But as a child of God, you know the rules, and you are still defying the rules. That's another thing. And that is where God will come in. God, you will, we, will, we will go back in Amos. You will see how God can be so judgmental. And so cruel with people that are, that are living in sin. And so let's see. It says, God and his rules, they are what? They are there for us to do what? To live. And so if you are consistently and persistently defying those rules, then there is, there is, you are going to do what? They are going to incur the wrath of God. Let us open our Bible to Amos 9, 1 to 10. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar. Yes. And he said, smite the, the lintel yes. of the door. Yes. That the post may shake. Yes. And cut them in the head. Oh, all of them. Yes. And I will slay the last of them with yes. the sword. Thank you. Please stop there, man. He said, strike the tops of the few pillars. <laughs> Who are the people that the pillars will come on this morning? The people that are what? That are, that are living in sin. You can see the, the, the Israelites. You can see the judgment that the, God, that, that the Lord is doing what? Is has rolled over the, 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 the Israelites. God has judged them because they are what? They are recalcitrant. They don't want to change. They do not want to change. And God has gotten to a point where he's, he's, he cannot do what? He, 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 he wants to deal with them. He says, strike the tops of the pillars so that the thresholds shake. He said, bring them down on the heads of all the people. Those who are left, I will kill with the sword. He said, not one will get away. Nobody, no sinner will get away from the presence of the Lord. The Lord's hands will do what will stretch out to the sinner. He said, though they dig down to the depth of the grave, from there my hand will take them. It is, it is not a good thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. God can be so merciful can be so gracious, can be so wonderful. But when you fall into the hands of the Lord, then who can save you? Mm -hmm. Who can deliver you? And let's see what, what God is saying here. He said, though they dig down to the depths of the grave. You, you, you are digging down to the depths of the grave. You want to hide from God. He said, from there my hand will take them. Though they climb up to the heavens, from there I will bring them down. Three. Though they hide themselves on the top of camel, there I will own them down and seize them. Though they hide from me at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent to bite them. Though they are driven into exile by their enemies, there I will command the sword to slay them. I will fix my eyes upon them for evil and not for good. If God is saying I will fix my eyes on you for, 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 for evil and not for good, <laughs> the Lord that you are still saying, God, please bless me, have mercy on me. And the Lord is saying, I will not, that mercy, I'm still going, I'm, I'm still holding it back. I'm still going to show you, but I'm holding it back. But if now God is saying, I'm going to do what? I'm going to look at you with what? With you. I should go to the I'll tell you, 
The Lord, the Almighty, He who touches the earth and it melts. The Lord who touches his, the head and it melts. And all who live in it mourns. The old land rises like the night. Then says,